Previously on NYPD Blue. I'm glad you made it out. I am too. Our schedules haven't made it easy. I don't have a lot of free time, but the free time I do have, I tend to make the most of it. I'd like to see you again. We'll work it out. Even if it's last minute? Even better. I plan to adopt Michelle and raise her as my daughter. That said, you can see her anytime you like. That said, my clients will entertain only one proposal. That you relinquish full custody to them in exchange for limited visitation rights. All right, you want to turn this into a battle. Everyone's going to lose. No one more than the kid. I, I think I got something regarding your custody issue. Frank has a sister named Adrian. Not only that, but the guidance counselor is pretty sure there was trouble at home. I, I'm really sorry my parents are doing this to you, but I don't think I can help. You can tell us why you went from being a really good kid to suddenly doing drugs and drinking. I was a teenager. You could talk about who got you pregnant. I, I really can't help you. I'm sorry. You understand the hearing is in two days. If it wasn't your brother, was it your father? Get out! Assuming that we can't dig up any more dirt, where does that leave us? You might have to reconcile yourselves to the fact that they may get shared custody. Or more. Ready? Sure. Detective... Where do you keep your handgun at night? On top of a bookcase, out of reach of my son. Locked up? No, but completely out of reach of my son. Has your six-year-old son ever held your gun? Yeah, because uh, if you don't let your kids see it, they get more curious about it. You show them the gun, unload it, of course, you let them hold it, and then the mystery's gone and they don't go looking for it. How many times have you let your son hold your gun? I got it, Dan, all right? If you're getting impatient with me now, Andy, how are you going to react on the stand when you're being questioned by the call hands attorney? I have testified more times than I can count. Not in a child custody hearing. Andy, we need to do this. All right. Would you describe yourself as a violent man? No. Ever get physical with anyone? I'm a detective, so yeah. Confrontations when arresting people. Stuff like that. You ever beat a suspect you were questioning? What's this got to do with the kind of parent I am? If the question's objectionable, I'll object. If you're arguing that using appropriate force makes me an unfit parent, then there isn't a fit parent in this department. Don't say things like, if it makes me an unfit parent. It's not worth putting that idea in the judge's head. How often have you had confrontations with suspects that required force? Not a lot. More than 10 times? Yeah. More than 20? Okay, Dan, enough. I get it. Let's just finish with the questions, then we can run through what your responses should be. My responses are going to be my responses, all right? Let's get that straight. I'm talking about your delivery more than the content. This is who I am, okay? I'm not going to all of a sudden turn into Jimmy Stewart by 5 o'clock today. You hired me to help win your case. And practicing the cross-examination is one of the things I need my clients to do. If you want me to reiterate what a good case the Callahans have, I will. We have to be as ready as we can. All right. Detective Sipwitz, are you an alcoholic? John. Uh, where's Andy? Uh, him and Connie are meeting the lawyer. Hmm? Any developments on that front? I don't know. What do we got? Lisa Checky, 41. Blowing the head with a blunt object, uh, presumably that hammer. Blood's still wet, so what happened this morning? Any signs of sexual assault? Not that I can tell. There's no sign of fourth century. There's nothing ransacked. Doesn't look like anything was stolen. We got the neighbor who called it in, Carla Howell. Ms. Howell, Detectives Clark and Ortiz. This is terrible. Just terrible. Now you knew Ms. Checky? Just say hi and bye, that's it. How'd you come upon the scene? I was taking a load of laundry down the wash when I heard Lisa arguing in her apartment with someone. It sounded like a man. When was this? Eight, eight fifteen. Could you hear what they were arguing about? No, and I stopped and gave it a good listen to make sure it wasn't anything too violent. Couldn't make out any words. Went down and put a load in, came back, doors open. That's how I found her. Did you recognize the man's voice? No, but she has been dating this guy, Stan. My guess it was him, him who was arguing with her. Not saying it was him who killed her. 
Although he's somebody you could start with. You got a last name on this Stan? No, just Stan. He was younger. Good looking guy. Almost like he was a little out of her league. Because Lisa was a little on the mousy side, if you know what I mean. But that's none of my business. Yeah. Thanks for your help. The OA might have been dating a Stan somebody. All right. All right, we'll dump a phone. Theo. Doing great. Connie and the baby? <clears throat> great. How are you doing? Good. You know, I feel good. So, uh, what's going on? We got this, uh... When Connie went for the permanent adoption, the parents of the baby's father showed up in family court contesting it on the grounds that we're unfit. The father who killed Connie's sister? Yeah. They showed up with this high-priced lawyer who uh, looked on every rock and found a lot to use against us. And all we got on them is the, is the possibility that their daughter, Adrian, was raped by her father, which she refuses to admit. How certain are you the uh, rape actually happened? Evidence-wise, pure speculation. But when we brought it up, her reaction said it happened. All right. But then she shut down on us hard, and uh, she wouldn't let us talk to her again. And even if we could, I don't know if it'd do any good. You being in special victims, I thought... Maybe you'd have another angle. She married? Yeah. Kids? Did you get the sense she dealt with this, talked about it? I don't know, but my guess would be no. Because if she's got a whole life built up, Andy, it'll be tough to convince her it's worthwhile. Yeah, that's what we ran into. Which could have been because of how we put it to her. Connie being desperate, me being me. You think I have a better shot at talking to her? You got a lot more experience with this kind of case. You're hoping she'll open up if I tell her the same thing happened to me. That's not why I called you. Well, it's all right if it is. I don't know what else to do. Where can I find her? <sighs> When's your final hearing? Five tonight. Diane, we're desperate. Did you ever see Stan? Tell us about you and Lisa Checky. What? You got a lot of calls to her recently. What about? Her need to get her life straight, pretty much. Is she okay? Oh, she's involved in something. How'd she need to get her life straight? She's a nice person, don't get me wrong, but uh, kind of a doormat. Doormat? That's what you call your girlfriend? Ex. Breaking up, that's what the calls were about. She tried to kill herself. Is that what this is about? No. Why'd you go there? I mean, she was pretty shattered about us busting up. When it's over, it's over, right? People just got to go their separate ways. <clears throat> what ended it? Instead of dropping crumbs, why don't you just lay it out so it doesn't take all day? She was born on her brother-in-law, which A, is unfaithful to me, and B, disrespects her sister. How'd you find this out? I come over to visit, unannounced. He comes walking out the door, his hair all mussed up, his face all flushed. She thinks the only way to preserve her youth is by going slut. <laughs> Ripcord, I'm out of there. That's the book on her. Your turn. What's she involved in? She's dead, Stan. Killed this morning. Get out. Might have been a robbery. Maybe not. What? Wait, 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 wait. You're just dropping this on me? What, she's dead? She's killed? Like, like I don't have feelings for her? Your doormat ex. Yeah, but we still... Oh, my God. Where were you this morning, Stan? You gotta be kidding. You know, if you weren't a cop, that would get you a pop in the mouth. Yeah, well, I am a cop, and I'm asking. Did she suffer? Stan, where were you? Atlantic City, with my dad. When'd you get back from Atlantic City? Seven, eight, I don't know. Your dad will confirm? Yeah. Can you think of anyone else who might have done it? I don't know. What's her brother-in-law's name? Pete Kazarian. Now, if we're done... I... Yeah, take off. Compare the market. Have a seat, Mr. Kazarian. I hate to resort to it with Shay, but my time here is literally costing me money. Well, where were you at 8 this morning? On my way to work. Couldn't this be discussed in my office? Can anyone confirm your whereabouts at 8? A couple of hundred people on the number 4 train with me, will they do? What's your relationship with Lisa Checky? She's my wife's sister. Are you close? To Lisa, not particularly. Is Lisa in trouble? The landlord says you've been helping her with the rent. Why is that? Why do you care? Go ahead and assume we have a good reason. Lisa's had some money trouble over the past six months. I've offered to help out. Because you're such a nice guy? Basically, yeah. Not because you're sleeping with her. What? Sleeping with her? Are you out of your mind? When's the last time you were at Lisa's apartment? I haven't been to her apartment in, I don't know, months. Sleeping with her. 
Did Lisa tell you this? We have witnesses who put you at her apartment repeatedly over the last few weeks. And why have you been there? Okay, guys. Did Lisa tell you that I've been sleeping with her? And even if she did, what am I doing here? I need answers now or I call my attorney. Lisa's dead. She was murdered this morning. You're joking. We're not. I have a relationship with my assistant. Lisa's apartment is near the office. We've met there occasionally. Lisa let you use her apartment to cheat on her sister. I told Lisa I would help out with the rent in exchange for access to her apartment. I told her it was so I could nap there during the day. That's a pretty elaborate scenario there, Mr. Kazarian. Now, you sleeping with Lisa, that's a little more believable. I have never slept with her, and I didn't kill her. Then talk us out of it. Lisa was a really needy person with low self-esteem, and she had bought the affections of a string of boyfriends who were all basically deadbeats. Stan. That was the most recent guy, and he really took advantage of her. Well, like you did. I'm not perfect, but I had nothing to do with Lisa's death. Nothing, okay? No, that's not okay. We're going to need to talk to your assistant, your wife, and your co-workers. As soon as you're done being heartbroken. What's the brother-in-law saying? That he wasn't boning the DOA, that he was renting time at her apartment so he could bone his assistant. Very classy. We believe him. We're going to call the assistant and find out. Yeah, he put it back on Stan Diedrich. Looked into the DOA's bank activity. Stan Diedrich cashed a $10,000 check from the DOA a week ago. Well, he mentioned that when you talked to him the first time? No. And we ran his phone, calls to a bookie and 1-800 handicapping lines. Did we check his alibi? He said he was in Atlantic City with his dad, who we're still trying to get a hold of. Let's haul Stan's ass back in here. You got it. Where have you been? I reached out to Diane Russell. What about? She's in sex crimes now. Is she going to talk to Adrian? She's going to try. When? She knows we got court at five. Andy, that's great. That's a great idea. Well, we'll see. Nothing's for sure. But Diane seemed confident. She said she'd try and talk to Adrian. That's all it was. Okay. You a gambler, Stan? Sit down. Where's this coming from? Ran your phone, checked your numbers. A lot of calls into a loan shark named Vincent Ficano. Yeah, okay, I gamble. Didn't I tell you I was in Atlantic City this morning? I wasn't there to look at the ocean. You addicted? No, but thanks for asking. What's up, guys? Lisa, check you fund your gambling? No. She wrote you a lot of checks over the last six months. 100 here, 200 there. Which I paid back, and I have the canceled checks to prove it. Hmm. Got one for 10 grand from last week? That was a special loan. She didn't want that back. Your uh, doormat ex didn't want her 10 grand back? That was for a partnership and a business. A horse named Paul Revere, maybe. Online sports memorabilia. Signed cards, jerseys, baseballs. Her end was the cash. Mine was for in the business. So this is something that's up and running? Almost. Any paperwork to prove that it exists at all? A part of the ten grand was for the attorney to drop the papers. That's who I was on the phone with when you barged in. What a coincidence. Oh, come on. I, I told you before, I was in Atlantic City this morning. Hotel doesn't have a record of you. My dad booked the room and paid the tab. Look, check the eye in the sky at the Taj. $25 black check, third table from the end. I'm the guy with the big stack of hundred chips. All right, Stan, this is where the tide starts to turn, either for you or against Can you. you. just check with my dad? We've been trying. He's not returning our calls. Well, keep trying. In the meantime, a little benefit of the doubt. Not a lot to base that on, Stan. Am I under arrest? Hmm? May I leave? Yeah, why don't you go home and stay there? Agent Kathy, Detective Diane Russell. Can I talk to you? About what? Your niece, Michelle, her custody hearings this afternoon. Did the other detectives send you? They thought you might be more comfortable talking to me. I handle sexual abuse cases. Look, I have no interest in being part of this. If you give me five minutes, I can explain why you might. Five minutes. Thank you. You have a very nice home. Family, too, I understand. Two kids? That's right. I really appreciate you giving me this time. Why don't we just get to it? This isn't something I talk about very often, but there's a lot at stake right now, and sometimes you have to stand up and be as courageous as you can, even though you'd rather hide from it. My father sexually assaulted me. It started when I was five years old, when he would wash me in the bathtub. When he was inappropriate... I told myself he just didn't know where to put his hands. And things got worse. By the time I was 12, he was making me do sexual things. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but it doesn't apply to me. 
I had a very hard time with long-term relationships. A lot of fighting. I could never explain my side of things because of my secret. Until I dealt with it, it nearly killed me. Um, I need a glass of water. Can I get you something? I'm fine. Thanks. Because of what happened, I, uh, I turned into a drunk. I drink all day. Hit bottles everywhere. In my purse, in a laundry hamper. I was 36 years old before I could talk about it. But when I finally did, I was able to get my life back. What's your point, Detective? Adrian, if your father did to you what my father did to me, and you can live with your secret, that's one thing. But if he's going to do the same thing to your niece, and you don't do anything to stop him, that's on you. And you won't be able to live with that secret. How dare you put this on me? I have a husband. I have two wonderful children. I have a life. I am not some drunk. No. Because if you are, I suggest switching to vodka, saving yourself the gum. What are you talking about? I know what you did in the kitchen, Adrian. I used to do it myself. I can't help you. My children will be home from school any minute. Please, go. If you change your mind, just want to talk now or... Anytime. Call me. Martin Diedrich, someone called me in. Detective Jones and Matt Avoy. They'll be back in a minute. That's okay. Have a seat. Appreciate it. Don't apologize. Now, you did the best you could. We really appreciate it, Diane. Yeah, bye. You're going to shut down? Yeah. Excuse me, sweetheart. The message said urgent, and I got a job to get back to. What'd you call him for? I didn't mean nothing. You want to call me sweetheart and see what happened? Hey, what's your problem? All right, all right. Come on. What's going on? Martin, did you get him in a room? Come on, let's go. Get him. Asshole. I don't want to hear it, all right? All right. I just need a minute to cool down. Take all the time you need. Ah, uh, these grandparents. <laughs> what did they do, huh? But what did that old lady do? Have the, the girls over for high tea, you know, go to the charity ball? And how about him? What did he do when he wasn't molesting his own daughter, huh? Working on his golf game, buy low, sell high? I served my country. I served my city. I spent my whole adult life hitting killers and rapists and thieves off the street. I've done good in my life. But they're going to paint me out to be a bum, a, a drunk, when I spent my whole life protecting them. They're going to take Connie's baby, John. And they're going to go through me to do it. What were you this morning, Mr. Diedrich? At the bald guy's boyfriend out there, that's why he got so pissed. You want to bring him in and ask? Where you been all day? Feels like you've been dodging us. Well, not the case. I was out running around all day. Didn't check messages. So where were you early this morning? Coming back from Atlantic City on a shuttle. By yourself? I was with my son Stan. What time did you get in? We took the early one. It leaves a little after five. Gets in, uh, I don't know, seven. You know Elisa Chucky? What's the problem here, fellas? Or do you know her or not? She got her money, okay? She claiming different? But what happened this morning? I went over and gave her the ten grand, cash. If she's saying different, she's homely and a liar. Why'd you take 10,000 cash over there to begin with? She claimed Stan forged the check, and she was going to uh, call the cops on him today if she didn't get the money. In cash, which she got. Do you always pay off your son's debts? I don't see how that's any of your business. Well, we got witnesses who heard arguing from Lisa's apartment this morning. Well, I'd like to see you hand over 10,000 of your own money and not get a little pissed off. You're right, I probably would get angry. Trust me, you would. Especially if she may have loaned that money to my son in the first place. That is what happened. She made it up about him forging a check only after he broke up with her. So, what we're saying here, Martin, we understand what happened, how it happened, and those are big factors. Okay. Factors in what? In what went wrong this morning. What went wrong? She's dead. From the beating you gave her. No way. No way. I didn't kill that woman. I left and she was counting the money. You were the last one there. You argued. This is one of those cases where you can say you didn't do it all day long. It's going to land on you regardless. I didn't kill her. 
Last chance to talk about it, Martin. I didn't do it. I swear to God. <sighs> Your dad walked right into it. Put himself there, admitted to arguing with the DOA, but uh, something's not right as far as this guy doing the murder. You behave at all like a guy who killed someone earlier today. Perhaps you have been known to lie, metal boy. So the son doesn't stand? Yeah, maybe. Well, let's bring him back in. You brought this guy in twice already, and at some point he's just going to get irritated and lawyer up. All right, so what then? Don't talk to him ever again? I'm saying don't just bring him in and play it by ear. You're saying we need to know as much as we can about Stan first before we go at him one more time, and I tend to agree. Well, you know who we should talk to? Maybe Stan's lone shark when he had all the calls into the last couple days. All right, do that first. Establishing ground rules. You tell me what this is about up front, or I sit here with a big grin on my face and my lawyer gets here. We're investigating a homicide. Now, we know you're a loan shark. I prefer freelance loan specialists, the majority of which is $50 or less, so hardworking people can pay their gas bills. And we know you're a bookie, and you can call it whatever you want. We don't give a damn. This is about getting some background on somebody, all right? Who died? You don't know her. You know Stanley Diedrich? Yeah, I know Stan. A lot of calls between you and Stan last couple of days. He took out a loan about a month ago. Hence the calls. How much? Six grand. You pay back? And this conversation has nothing to do with my livelihood. Oh, we could uh, make it about that if you keep dragging this out. When a due date came, Stan told me he was short. I made clear to him that was unacceptable. And regardless of whatever financial pitfalls he was in the midst of, my mouth needed to be fed first. Since then, he met his obligation. When did he pay back? Today, a couple hours ago. He gave you 6,000 cash today? Seven with the VIG, plus three he put on a horse at Yonkers and some arena football games, which didn't seem so smart, but I don't pass judgment. That's 10,000 total in cash? Yeah. You deal it all with Stan's dad? Yeah, he's paid off some of Stan's loans. He ever threaten you, ever get physical with you? No. So Stan's dad's involved in this now? We don't know yet. Ah, uh, this is the ugly part of the business, you know? The desperation. And then they hit that last banana peel and <whistles> sign out. Stan got any other banana peels out there, as far as you know? This idiot's got 60 grand in markers all over town that I know of. So, yeah, I guess you might want to watch his step. All right, we're done, Vince. Thanks for your help. All right, I've got it. Adrian, you want to... I wanted you to know that I had thought about what you'd said. And it's not going to be possible. You mean testifying? Even if it were true, what you said about my father, I couldn't do it. Why? I've lied to my husband about everything. I'm afraid if he found out now, he'd leave me. If you keep lying, I'll go anyway. No, I'm asked. I feel like my whole life is going to come apart. Adrian, it needs to come apart. We fight all the time. The kids are always scared. The only peace I ever get is when the house is empty and I can unwind. You mean drink? Have you ever talked with anyone about this? No. But on the way over, I was thinking it might be beneficial to do that with someone who's had a similar experience. Even... A uh, support group, maybe. Adrian, we both know why you're really here. I did not come here to testify. Maybe that's what you told yourself so you'd make the trip to Brooklyn. But now that you're here, we both know that's what you need to do. Why did you do this to me? I know. <laughs> it feels horrible now. But it gets better when you're finally confronted. I don't know if I can. Open it or we'll take it down. 
What now? Because I'm in the middle of something. Is it any concern we got your dad in the cell right now? What the hell for? Oh, come on! All right, all right. Let's go someplace where you're not so distracted. Uh, five Number minutes, okay? Two, ten yard penalty. Repeat the third down. What the hell? Sit your ass down. You know your dad saw Lisa check you this morning? What are you talking about? He saw her to pay back the ten grand you stole. You know what time that was? It's off, Sam. Eight o'clock. Around the time she got killed. You know what that means? That we're looking at your dad for a murder. Yeah, out of your mind. All right, well, that's the way it's going, unless you got a different story. My dad did not kill Lisa. It's not in him. We're inclined to agree. Also, he didn't have a seven grand marker with Vincent Ficano. Neither do I. Not as of six hours ago. Stan, did you tell your dad to pay off Lisa Checky or she'd go to the cops? No. So you didn't watch him go to her place, watch him deliver the money, then go in after him and steal it? Do I look like a master criminal? You look like a desperate little slob who's got debts all over town. Debts with guys who break bones. According to Vince McConnell, there's a lot of heat on you right now. It makes sense that you'd be scared out of your mind. It makes sense that you do something desperate. But if you want to sell that to a judge, you don't do it by letting your dad take the rap. I can't help you. Please turn the TV back on. So you're going to let your old man go for this. Can I just see the score of the game? Oh, two seconds! Well, the TV goes out the window with you following it down. Great. Just great. Let's go. Hey, let's go. We don't like the dad for it. Even though he was the last one at the DOA's apartment and he had to fork over $10,000? If he killed her, he would have taken a 10 grand with him. So the money was found at her apartment? No. But the son, Stan, paid off seven grand to a loan shark today and put the rest down on some bets. Yeah, see, what we think happened is that Stan had his dad pay off the DOA in cash. Stan went up there after his dad left, took the cash, and killed the lady. And Stan doesn't have an alibi either. Well, his lack of one doesn't prove he did it. Can anyone put him there this morning? No. So what are you asking me? Well, while we're waiting on a crime scene in the ME, do we have enough to hold him? If he dated the DOA, he had legitimate access. So I don't know what the ME is going to give you, which means you don't have anything other than motive. So? I don't think I can sell it. In fact, I know I can't. All right, then. Kick him. I'll keep working the case. So if nothing else pops up, Stan skates on murder? Just keep working the case. That just sounds a cockroach. When the big one goes off, he'll be the last one standing. How much is Stan extended for? Uh, his loan shark ballparked it over 60 grand. If we don't get him, somebody on the street will, because he's about to be written off, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll make sure he's clear on that. All right. So, be it. What now? You're out of here for the time being. All right, good. Hey, what about my dad? Oh, we told him you were willing to let him take the ride on this? You don't want to stick around? No, huh? So? See it. But until we build up our case and nail you for good, watch your step out there. I'll be fine. Good. Because I don't know if Fakano means his heat on me. Well, like you having 60 grand out standing out on the street is a dangerous way to live. That's how I took it. Like, how dangerous? I think you have a pretty good idea, Stan. I'm asking. You name names? Well, like an ascending order of who wants you worse? No, because we're more interested in nailing the guy who killed an innocent woman than helping an asshole gambler. My advice? Build a defense on how you were scared for your life with these loan sharks. Cop to what happened with Lisa. You'll get 15 years, you'll be out in six with a fresh start. It's that, or you'll hit the street with a bullseye on your back. What if I give you the names of major bookmakers all across the city in exchange for witness protection? Not interested. I'll wear a wire on these guys. What you did to Lisa or no deal? Fine. No deal. Good luck. on the sociology of addiction, Detective Sicklitz, so help me out. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, right? There's no ex or former about it? Yeah. And how long have you been, how do you term it, in recovery? Going on 10 years. Sober all that time? 99%. How about the other 1%? My oldest boy, when he died, I had a drink or two. A drink or two? Fact is, you went on a bender, didn't you? Your Honor, I'll allow it. <clears throat> I slipped a little. It was a one-time thing. Still, it could happen again, right? Yeah, it could happen again. Anyone who's an alcoholic can... Thank you. Let's talk about your job. How many times have you been shot at, Detective? Oh, my God. What's going on, Counselor? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Could we get a short recess? No witness. No objections, Mr. Reardon? None, Your Honor. Back in 15. Your daughter has something to say to you, Mr. Callahan. What? An apology for all the heartache she's caused us? No, thanks. Come on, Barbara. You walk out of here, I put you in cuffs. On what charges? He knows. What's going on? She's estranged herself from us for over ten years. She's here now just to tell some story to embarrass us. A story, huh? Tell you what. 
Let's withdraw the petition. We don't need this. We're winning. Adrian, go ahead. He can't have another girl in the house, Mom. He can't. Why? How could you not know? What are you talking about? He sexually molested me the whole time I was growing up. She's on drugs again. No, I'm not. And I'm not your special girl, you sick bastard. And it's not our little secret. And it's not how you show your daddy you love him. And it's not my fault if people find out. <sighs> Adrian, um, Andy and Connie wanted to know if they can uh, come over and thank you. I'd rather not. It's fine. They'll understand. I don't know what to do now. The support programs we talked about. I can take you to one right away. My husband is going to know something's wrong. I'm scared to tell him. I'll be there with you. I'll be with you all the way through this, Adrian. Okay. Uh, ready to go? Can we just sit for a minute? Sure. Sorry about that. No problem. Enjoying your meal. The cop who can cook. Is that your partner? Yeah. <laughs> they won their case. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's really good news. Why was he being challenged as a fit parent to begin with? Uh, the baby's grandparents were going after him about his past, about being a cop. Being a cop in general, or? You know, he's aggressive, but that's what makes him so good. You need to be aggressive to be a good cop? No, oh, you do, actually. Aggressive, like, proactive, or aggressive, like, you know, <sighs> kicking ass? Sometimes both. Why? No, it's just that working in the ER, I've, I've seen some guys come in who were definitely smacked around by officers excessively. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I know you're a cop, but I think it's wrong. Well, did you find out what happened during the scuffle, or you just assumed that the cop was out of line? I don't want to get in an argument. No, I'm just this. curious. I've seen more than a couple guys brought in by cops, and I know their wounds were excessive. It was clear to me that the officer must have gotten a couple extra hits in when the situation was probably already neutralized. Yeah, yeah I love how you just assume that. You're a cop, so I don't expect you to break rank, but I saw what I saw, John. Yeah, and I've seen what I've seen. And believe me, when you're fighting for your life, you're not counting your punches. Okay, that's one thing, but there's no way all these guys who've been beat up have made the cops feel they were in a life-or-death struggle. There's no way. How do you know that? Let me ask you this. Have you ever hit somebody more than you needed? Just off the adrenaline, off being pissed, off wanting to teach them a lesson? Yeah, you know what? Everybody hates cops until they need one. I didn't say hate cops. No, but you sure as hell don't believe us. You're taking it wrong. Maybe we should just call it a night. Yeah, sounds good. Take care. You too. For the record, I was looking forward to seeing you tonight. I was just expressing my opinion. Yeah, so was I. You know what? I don't need to go into the round. Like having a baby sister, Theo? It's pretty good. Yeah. It's fun to make you smile. Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't tough to do. <laughs> All right, Squirt. Everyone under 10 needs to hit the hay. Mm. But mm. Diane's still here. Oh, Diane's going to bed herself. Yeah, I'll put the baby down. Say good night, Theo. Okay? Good night, Diane. Mm -hmm. I will see you soon. Good night. Diane. I don't know how to do it. 
Thank you. Just seeing y'all together is thanks enough. Okay. <sighs> How'd it go with Deidre? Rough. Her husband was shocked. She gonna be all right? She's on her way. If we can be any help with that, I think we owe you one. You don't owe me anything. I owed you from a long time ago. Well, the decks are cleared now. Thanks, Diane. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, you got a nice family, Andy. You're lucky. I know. See ya. Daily Show looks at America.